Welcome to the Shift Gold Friday Gold Wrap, your overview of this week's precious metals news. It's Friday, September 28th. I'm your host, Mike Meharry. Thanks for tuning in. Well, gold is down this week. The yellow metal dipped back below $1,200, and the dollar went up, mostly based on the latest Federal Reserve maneuverings. The Fed nudged interest rates up again Wednesday. Now, this wasn't a surprise, but it seems to have reinforced optimism about the economy, as if there wasn't enough optimism already. Gold is currently hovering around the six-month low it hit during Thursday's session. As one report put it, the dollar stood tall against its peers on Friday after data showed U.S. economic growth accelerated in the second quarter at its fastest pace in nearly four years. Okay, so actually this wasn't news. We've known this for weeks. What actually happened is that the government stuck by its 4.2% GDP growth estimate for the second quarter of this year. So this wasn't anything new. But when people are this bullish, everything is bullish. Anyway, gold is down more than 13% from its April high. Now, I call this a buying opportunity. And interesting, I'm not alone. We had a good bit of mainstream bullishness on gold this week. I'll start with CNBC Futures Now trader Jeff Kilberg. He said yesterday that gold is actually performing better than you would think, given the high interest rate environment. Quote, the reason I want to be a buyer here at 1180 is the fact that the bears have not moved this underneath 1150, and they've had every single reason. End quote. Then there was a Barron's article that proclaimed, gold is cheap, inflation is coming, you do the math. The Barron's writer insists gold has gotten a bad rap, and this out-of-favor asset class now deserves a place in investment portfolios. Quote, compared with stocks and other financial assets, gold looks inexpensive. More important, inflation is starting to pick up in the U.S. and in much of the world as central banks shrink their enormous balance sheets. And gold has represented a good defense against inflation, eroding the value of a stock or bond portfolio. Over time, it has held its value against the dollar. Gold was 2067 an ounce 100 years ago, and that bought a good man's suit. At $1,200 an ounce, the same is true today, end quote. This picks up on a theme I've been harping on for months. The world is awash in debt, especially governments, including the U.S. federal government. Well, state governments, too. I just published a report on the Shift Gold blog this morning highlighting the fact that U.S. states have run up $1.5 trillion in debt and unfunded liabilities. 40 of the 50 U.S. states are in the red. I'll link to that report in the show notes page. Anyway, Good Haven Mutual Fund co-portfolio manager Keith Trauner told Barron's that all of this debt means governments are keen to see inflation increase. Quote, virtually every government in the world is trying to promote inflation, partly because there is so much sovereign debt, he said. When there is so much debt, he contends governments have three choices, default, restructure, or inflate the currency. Politicians, when given the chance, will choose the latter. The article highlights another point you've seen us make. Rising interest rates are not necessarily bad for gold. And this is not merely theoretical. Gold had one of its best decades ever during the inflationary 1970s when interest rates soared. The potential for a decline in the dollar would also boost gold, according to the Barron's article. It quotes a metal strategist at Sprott U.S. who sounds a little bit like Peter Schiff. Trey Reich said he thinks the Fed may have to relent on rate hikes in part because the upward pressure on rates is squeezing developing economies that have dollar-denominated bonds or other obligations, again, debt. Reich said now is a good time to buy gold. He said gold offers enormous portfolio utility in today's complex and treacherous investment environment. Bank of America is also bullish on gold. Bank of America Merrill Lynch commodities analyst Francisco Blanc recently told Bloomberg bullion could average $13.50 an ounce in 2019. And he also mentions the giant U.S. federal debt. Quote, we're still pretty constructive longer term on gold because of worries over the future of the U.S. economy, even though it's performing relatively well right now. In the short run, the effects of the strong dollar higher rates dominate. But in the long run, a huge U.S. government budget deficit is pretty positive for gold. End quote. 
I suppose I should touch on the Federal Reserve meeting. Like I said, the FOMC nudged up rates 25 basis points, just like everybody figured it would. So the federal funds rate is now at 2.25%. The Fed offered up a rosy outlook for the U.S. economy, projecting growth will continue for the next three years. The central bank also dropped the phrase, the stance of monetary policy remains accommodative, from its statement. As an analyst told Reuters, it does seem to potentially indicate they believe monetary policy is becoming less accommodative and getting more toward that neutral rate. Now, that seems pretty obvious, right? Peter Schiff has talked about this. There's really no way, realistically, that the Fed can push rates a whole lot higher with all of the debt. But Fed Chair Jerome Powell said we shouldn't read anything into the removal of this phrase. Okay, I call BS, just like Peter did. If the Fed didn't mean anything by removing the phrase, why remove it? I mean, these guys know everybody is going to go through this statement with a fine-tooth comb. Of course it means something. I agree with Peter. I think the Fed is near the end of the tightening cycle. We're getting close to as high as it can go. 3%, I think, is probably the max. So that's, what, three more rate hikes? So given this, the market should be factoring in the next easing cycle, which really can't be too far off. Now, one reporter asked Powell if the central bank would just keep raising rates until something in the economy breaks. Powell answered that there's no reason to worry about that because the Fed is moving slowly. It will have plenty of time to adjust its policy if there are any signs of trouble. Now, Peter said that's the same kind of hubris we saw from Alan Greenspan leading up to to the 2008 financial crisis. At the time, the increases were a quarter a point of a, a, a quarter point at a time. Now, granted, Greenspan's Fed was raising rates every time it met, not every other, so the pace was a bit faster. Still, it was viewed as this same kind of measured pace we're seeing today. Everything seemed fine until it all blew up. I'm going to quote Peter here because I think he sums it up better than I can. You have the Fed confident that simply because they raised rates slowly that somehow the markets and the economy will be insulated from any ill effects, and they'll have ample time to judge the effects and maybe adjust their policy. But what's happening is this is simply lulling everybody into a false sense of security. Yes, had the Fed moved more aggressively at raising rates, they would have pricked the bubble sooner. They would have brought on the recession sooner, and the problems would have been more obvious to everybody. But because they are proceeding as slowly as they are, they're simply allowing the problems to get that much bigger before the bubble finally bursts. And when that bubble does pop, it's not going to be this soft landing that we keep hearing about. It's going to be a crash landing. So here's the question. Which of these little rate hikes will be the straw that breaks the camel's back? Powell seems to think when it happens, well, the central bank can just back off and everything will be fine. But you know, when you break the camel's back, it doesn't just hop up and run away when you take that last straw off. The back is broke. As Peter put it, once you break the camel's back, it's all over for the camel. I want to touch on another news item before I sign off. I've talked recently about countries looking for ways to decrease their dependence on the U.S. dollar. It's mostly been countries like Russia, China, Iran, Turkey, countries with strained relationships with the U.S., so not surprising. But lately, some of America's allies have even gotten fed up with U.S. economic bullying. This week, the EU announced it will create a special payment channel to circumvent U.S. economic sanctions and facilitate trade with Iran. Now, this is a big deal. It's another step toward global de-dollarization. I'll link to the article about this in the show notes page, and, and you can get more details. The bottom line is the dollar's strength probably isn't going to last. Remember, right now, gold is cheap. Now is the time to buy. So call a Shift Gold Precious Metal Specialist today at 1-888-GOLD-160, and they can tell you more about this. Well, that's a gold wrap for this week. You can get more details on all of these stories and more, and keep up with the latest precious metals news and analysis throughout the week at shiftgold.com news. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the Friday Gold Wrap over at iTunes for free. You can find a link on the show notes page. I really appreciate you listening to the show, and I'll talk to you again next week. 